you're in a scenario where, I mean, the vaccine and the, and the, uh, the virus data continues to improve and be in incredibly encouraging. The retail sales number that we saw in January suggests that we have a ton of pent-up demand still in the system. And, you know, we're likely to see GDP growth numbers in the second and third quarter of this year that, that we certainly haven't seen in my lifetime. Uh, it, that makes sense. It makes sense that this is a constructive environment for stocks. And even with rates, you know, moving up, uh, you know, quite a bit here, at least off of the lows, we're still only getting back to levels that existed before the pandemic, which, again, makes sense. The pandemic is very likely coming to an end, you know, in, over the course of the next, you know, let's call it six months. And so the market's pricing that in as a forward discounting mechanism. So does this, I mean, are we out of it? Is this done? Is the pandemic over? I mean, we're still getting shots. We're still getting vaccines and everything else. We know that the markets are forward looking. But does this mean that the world ahead is free of COVID and we don't have to worry about the economic lockdowns anymore? I, I'm certainly not the person that's going to break the headline that the, uh, that the pandemic is over, though I'd, I'd love that opportunity and that honor. No, I mean, I, I think what the market is, is seeing is a world, though, that is significantly better. Um, you know, the vaccines that we have in the United States, the three that we have, are 90 plus percent effective. I mean, if you go back to a year ago, a year ago this time, we didn't even know about COVID, or at least we were just kind of getting into it. But, you know, the early expectations on vaccine were that we were going to get something more like the flu vaccine, 40 to 60 percent effective. You know, what we've seen is really a mar I mean, we get lost, I think, sometimes in the back and forth and the political nature of everything right now. But what the scientific community has achieved here with these vaccines is tremendous. I mean, it's, it's unprecedented. And then when you look at the, the rollout in the United States, yes, it's slow and it's frustrating, but we've still vaccinated, you know, 20 percent of our population. You're up somewhere around 6 percent. At least we've gotten one shot in the arm of around 20 percent. We're on pace to get, you know, the bulk of the public vaccinated over the course of the summer. And then we should expect better economics and hopefully better out health outcomes on a go-forward basis, and the market's excited about that. I mean, the markets are excited. We, we can see it in, in what happened last year from the pandemic lows with the NASDAQ. We see it with what's happening over the last six months with the Russell 2000 small cap index. But there is this very, very interesting kind of battle happening right now with regard to whether or not high interest rates should tap the brakes on the market, only, it seems, for a specific part of the market. What's the part of the market most sensitive to rising rates? Well, I mean, I think from a, uh, you know, who benefits? I mean, certainly parts of the value cyclical trade benefit from higher rates. Look at, I mean, look at banks. Banks were facing an inverted yield curve, you know, just several months ago. And now you've got the steepest yield curve, you know, in over, you know, a couple of years time here. Actually, I think it's about three years. So there's certainly beneficiaries to that. Um, you know, more rate sensitive parts of the market, even there, you know, where you look at the dividend payers. Dividend payers have outperformed 18, 19 percent. Since Labor Day, uh, you would think that maybe that would be a part of the market that would have pressure from higher rates. But rates are still so low relative to dividend yields and relative, uh, you know, to to they're still very much supportive for, for stocks. I think, you know, the parts of the market that are going to be most at risk here might be fixed income or things like just owning Treasury bonds. But I think everyone needs to take a break or, or at least a breath on yields. I, I We feel pretty confident that the Fed is not going to allow uh, the 10 year yield to just surge you know, uninterrupted. They have a dual mandate. There's still quite a bit of unemployment. We heard that from Powell. Operation twist could come on the table, outright yield curve controls could come on the table. We expect rates to go higher, but we do not think that they're just going to surge unimpeded between now and the end of the year. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.